Finally, we're back, everyone. Mmm. Drinking Dr. Pepper, and more importantly, we're creating a character today. This is going to be a tutorial, uh, mostly for people who are interested in creating a character to use in some game. It's not going to be that applicable if you're going to create a character that's going to be used in a movie or something more high def or something where you have some uh, higher requirements. It's going to be mostly for i mean i'm going to speak like you're a unity developer so hopefully you know some kind of word some kind of unity lingo we're gonna jump into unity also later on uh but of course all the techniques that i talk about everything that we do in blender you can also import it into uh, if you're using unreal engine or whatever you're using you can use it there also uh it's also it's i'm not going to cut too much i'm going to it's going to be a little bit of a longer video uh, because i put this off so much because i wanted to like create small separate videos for everything and i'm like ah oh, god damn it i have to do something so I'll, I'll create a video for everything and we're gonna go through how to create clothing how to create items how to attach them to your characters uv unwrapping uh we're gonna talk about how to texture uh, we're going to talk about how to create different character sliders, like, uh, I don't know, bigger ear, nose, whatever you want to do. Like, you have to create different races and stuff. If you have, want to have, like, elves and orcs and stuff like that uh, for your characters. We're going to do everything, essentially. <laughs> everything, budget the one video. We're probably going to be a very, very long video. But hopefully, if you're interested in creating characters for your game, you will learn uh, everything today. <laughs> That's the hope, at least. So, I'm not an uh, expert in uh, Blender yet. We're gonna jump into Blender first. Uh, I'm not an expert yet in Blender, but I know my ways around Blender now. I've worked with Blender for about a month, three weeks, something like that. Uh, and I feel kind of at home in Blender, but there's still things that I don't know. And you, you feel free to point out in the comments if I'm doing something weird or if I don't know some command or something. But there's still a lot of hotkeys that I don't know, a lot of tricks that I don't know about, so... Yeah, anyways, here is the character. Uh, if you don't know how to get to this point even, uh, how to create a character, uh, I recommend you check out my guide on how to create a make human character and how to import that into Blender. Because here we have our make human character, and that just makes it so much easier. Why is it so much easier? Well, first of all, we don't need to model the character, and second of all, everything is perfectly uh, weight painted. So. I'm gonna talk about that. Uh, let's open up this here. As you can see, this is the armature. In uh, Unity, this will be the uh, game object where you attach your... Uh, what's called the animator will be attached to this. And then the body and everything. This will be separate game objects. All this that you see here, everything... Every object that you see here, when you import it into Unity, will be a separate object. So you can, of course, delete the lamp. You're not gonna delete... Of course, if you, you can delete the camera also... This is going to be annoying when you export, if you export without, of course you can deselect them when you export and stuff like that, but I often just accidentally export the camera, so I usually delete it. It's useful if you do rendering and stuff in Blender, but I usually don't do that, so. Okay, anyways. Here's the character, here's the rig, uh, called the armature, and here we have the body mesh, this is the entire mesh. We have the eyebrows, uh, the mesh there, and we have the low poly, these are just the eyes. And... So, here's what we're gonna do. My workflow with this is what I usually do. <laughs> you should do, I've done one character, but still. Uh, is I separate the mesh into separate sub-meshes, and then I use the sub-meshes to create clothing, and then on top of clothing, I add uh, other meshes. So, in Unity, you know, we have skin mesh renders, and you have mesh renders. So, this here, the skin that we see, this mesh here, will be a skin mesh render, which means that if something moves, uh, it's, if a bone moves when you're doing an animation that's basically just moving bones around, it will also influence the vertices, it will also um, move the vertices, which is what vertex painting is. So for instance, let's say we go to the body here, and uh, first we go to, <laughs> to uh, the armature, we go to the head bone. I don't know what is a head bone, it doesn't exist. All these bones don't really correspond to real bones, I mean there's no head bone, but you know, it's uh, your head. Anyways, go to the body. We go into weight paint mode, and here you can see that uh, the head, when you move the head bone, every vertex uh, that is red here is going to be moved with that bone. And then there's going to be, that's like a 100% movement with the bone. Then there's like degrees of movement 
going from red to blue, where blue is no movement. So it's very easy to understand when you see this. And can go to separate bones and see how every bone affects different parts of the mesh. But this is perfectly weight painted when you imported it from Make Human. That just makes it so much easier. And it makes it so much easier when we're going to create clothing. So, here's what we're going to do. Uh, first off, we're going to create uh, clothing that is skinned. That is, uh, that it moves with your bones, it's weight painted. And then we're going to create some other, like we're going to create armor. I'm going to assume that we're creating some kind of medieval character. But of course this works for if you're making a sci-fi character or whatever. But um, I'm going to assume that so we're going to create some kind of sci-fi character with like a sword. Uh, I was thinking some uh, shoulder pads and like a chainmail armor. That's, that's, I think, enough for this tour. It's probably going to be quite long anyway. So, uh, I'm pressing 1. You can see all the commands that I'm doing. You can see down in this corner down here. If you want to see the, uh, the commands that I'm using. Uh, moving around in Blender, by the way, is hold down, control, click. And if you want to move sideways, it's shift plus uh, middle, or uh, shift middle mouse. Uh, scroll is zoom in. Uh, we're going to press 1 on the numpad just to zoom in from the front. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go... Press Z. Uh, Z basically makes you see through things, so you get wireframe mode essentially. And I'm gonna hold down control button, right click, and drag around the face. And this, uh, and then press Z to go out of wireframe mode. Uh, we're gonna press this little button here, which makes us see faces instead of. There are just different modes, right, in Blender. I'm gonna assume you don't know too much about Blender. If you're a Blender expert, there's probably gonna be a lot of things here which you already know. Um, this here is uh, vertices, then we have edges, and then we have faces. So, I'm going to deselect a lot of faces here. I don't know if there's a fast way of deselecting. Uh, if you know that, then let me know in the comments. But what I usually do is I, I just do this. I mean, it takes a while. <laughs> it takes a little bit of a while. Maybe I've sped up this and I'm speaking in chipmunk voice right now, or I just forgot about it. But uh, The goal here is to separate the entire mesh into separate meshes so that we can have... Uh, so I can disable different parts of the mesh. Basically, we're splitting them into game objects. And in Unity, we can then disable and enable different game objects to turn on the different armors. I'm going to show you them when we get to Unity, but that's going to be a while when we get to the Unity. But that's the idea. That's why we're doing this. So here I selected the head. I'm going to press uh, P, which you use to separate something into a uh, different object. Uh, we're going to separate the selection. Then we're going to do the same thing for the chest, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and yeah, something like this. I'm doing the exact same thing, holding down control, uh, as I did last time. Uh, and then let's select, uh, you can also use control if you want to select more, like for instance here, uh, if I want to select from this vertice, uh, vertex to this, oops, now it's select from the other way around, but sure. Uh, and this to this, and we can do the same trick as I did before, uh, hold down control, we can select these and these. And let me know in the comments if you know a better way of uh, doing this. If you think, of course, the downside of doing it this way, when you separate like this, there's two things. First of all, you're going to screw up your UVs uh, right in the intersection between the different meshes. Uh, but you can fix that later on if you want to. And also it's going to be... <sighs> I mean, it depends. You don't have to do it like this. You could also keep um, keep the mesh as it is, keep it as one mesh, and then use separate parts of the mesh um, and still have the entire body enabled. But the problem you're going to get then, that I at least ran into, was clipping. At least when you create some more complicated um, complicated meshes or complicated uh, clothing, it's, you're going to run into the clipping issue again and again and again. And that's why I did this separation. But you don't have to do it like this. Uh, you can't keep everything as one mesh, uh, but this, I'm just going to show you my way. It's my way or the highway. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, set, we can do a box select also. Press B to do a box select and select this area here. Sometimes the box select is more useful. I usually just use the uh, hold down control, but uh, sometimes, sometimes it's useful. Uh, select these vertices here uh, and separate these. Wink and select these, separate. Hopefully I did not go too fast. You can go like half speed or something <laughs> and see what controls I pressed. Uh, again, they're down here, so you can see everything I did. We go into object mode, and now we have all the body parts separated like this. But as you can see, there's, there's the slight issues with the UVs here. We're not going to bother, though. It's going to be a simple tutorial. We're going to go into 
uh, ways how to fix that uh, later on. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, here we have the arms, so we're gonna just name them arms. And here we have the head. And here we have the chest. And here we have the legs. And here we have... Okay, and th that's all. So let's say we want to create a chainmail armor. There's many, many ways you can create this. The thing... The reason why I, I'm going to show you my way of doing this. There are other ways. For instance, you can simulate cloth. I can show you that later on how to simulate cloth and stuff like that. The problem is you have to then weight paint everything yourself. The good part about if you clone an object of your mesh is that it retains all the weight painting that's on that mesh. So you don't have to wait paint it again, it will work perfectly. And I just love that it makes it so much faster to do anything. Uh, than have to manually wait paint everything. Okay, sure, it's fast to paint, it's not that slow. But the thing is, the iterations have to go through. You have to try with this joint and try with this joint and go back and fix and paint again. And before you get it to be perfect, it's like 10 hours of work or something before it's like... Mwah. But here it's just... Mwah, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, we're going to the chest here, uh, control L, or you can press A uh, two times to select every vertices. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, we are not... <laughs> Object mode! Shift D to copy the chest. Uh, rename that chest to, let's call it chain mail. And we go to the modifiers tab, and we add a solidify modifier. And solidify modifier makes something a little bit thicker, the upside is it makes it thicker, yes. The downside is it also adds, like, with clothing, you don't want the inside, because whenever we're doing, we're doing something for a game, right? So we want to have as few vertices as possible, we don't want to waste vertices, essentially. We don't have want to have vertices where you can never see them. Uh, and unfortunately, you get this with this. I don't know why, but for some reason, when you do a solidify modifier, uh, you have to do minus. Uh, to make it pop out, otherwise it goes inwards by default, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, it's always bothered me that you need to go minus. Uh, but as you can see here, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, that's what we did with the solidify modifier. So let's apply this modifier. And let's go into uh, this material. This is something you have to do to make it easier to see what we're doing here. So we're gonna remove this material, this is the skin material. I'm just gonna add a new material, just add a color to it. Just to make it easier to view what we're doing here. So I'm just going to add a dark blue color. We can call this a uh, chainmail or something. So, here we have the chainmail. And we're going to go into edit mode of this chainmail. And here we can see the issue here. As you can see, there's vertices on the outside and there's vertices on the inside. And we don't want these guys on the inside. If you know an easy way of doing this, uh, let me know. What I usually do is I, is I do this. I go into the middle. Uh, as I said, you can use move shift and middle mouse button to move around and then I press Z to go into this mode so that we can't select the other uh, the outside of the mesh uh, the outside vertices and then I just look around in every direction and select like this whoops <laughs> and it's not the fastest I know it's absolutely not the fastest but it gets the job done with if you're fast you can probably make this uh, in like 30 seconds or something if you're slow like me Takes half an hour. <laughs> Hopefully not gonna take it half an hour. Uh, and then we select the vertices inside here. There's probably an easier way of doing it. There's always a quick command, you know, like all these blender experts, they always have a command, like a fast uh, way of just clicking on something to... You can also press dot on the keypad. Like now, you can see this moving very slowly. If I press the... If you have a numpad and you press the del, that's also, the, you know, the dot, uh, that, that will zoom in on the current mesh. And it will make it easier to move with the uh, with the scroll. Uh, we'll select this and then we go out. And as you can see, I also select this. But this I want to keep. Like this here is perfect. Because I want this uh, rim here, this edge, uh, to just touch the skin there. Because that, that's going to look amazing. <laughs> going to look so fashionable. So goddamn fashionable. And we select this. And we select this. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna check the arms. The arms look good. Check the ass. Ass looks good. <laughs> check it just the, the uh, edge here. That looks good. Uh, and then we're gonna press X and we're gonna delete faces. 
make sure you don't delete Burtsis because then you're gonna delete uh, these also. Let's delete faces. Uh, and now we have a pretty good uh, chain shirt, and it's pretty much good to go as this. We can uh, paint on it, uh, but we could add some things just to make it a little bit more interesting. Of course, uh, I'm gonna show you how to make. Excuse me, I just have to have a sip. Mm. Mm. <coughs> mm, that's delicious. Uh, of course, uh, I was about to say. I'm gonna select this while I'm talking. Of course, you can uh, make. Like, now I'm making an alteration. I'm gonna add a little bit of a... Uh, uh, make this stand out a little bit more. So maybe there's a different material of the chain. Maybe there's some leather or something here that stands out a little bit. And you don't need to make it here. Like, most of these details, though, it's unnecessary to do what I'm doing right now. Because you can just add this on a high poly mesh. And then you can, in Substance Painter, uh, you can then add the details later on. You can use that high poly mesh to paint the normal map so that it looks like there's some bevels there, but there's really not. Uh, but now I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it in this way. It looks better, of course, if you do it like this, but it wastes a few vertices, a few polygons, a few triangles. So if you're thinking, if you're worried about optimization, um, then there's a more optimal way often to do this. But we're gonna talk about that, I'm gonna show you how to do that also in this tutorial. This is gonna be a very long tutorial, I have this other feeling. Okay, we're gonna press E to extend, and just click again to just confirm. And I'm gonna go and change this little thing into individual origins, uh, and I'm gonna, let's see here, uh, scale, and let's see, is everything set correctly here? Looks like it's set correctly. And I'm gonna scale up, press S to scale, and it will now scale outwards. Uh, so, yeah, something like this looks super cute. Uh, but now we can see we have an issue here. If we zoom in. <laughs> we're wasting, again, we're wasting vertices. This is such a... Th these are not needed, these vertices. So what we're gonna do here... Uh, there might be a faster way to do this also. Uh, I'm just gonna select around the edges here. Again, holding down control. Okay, now I'll select all those, then I'm going to press X, and Vertices, and then I'm going to select both these, um, both these circles here. So I'm going to control, control, what, 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 what am I selecting here? Okay. I don't know why it, sometimes it doesn't, oh, it selects on the other side, that's why. I have some <laughs> randomly selected things there, okay, that's why. Um, so, select both, come on, <laughs> don't embarrass me, embarrass me now with my poor clicking skills, like an old grandpa I need. <laughs> I had uh, an application, I remember, in my old, uh, like, first grade, I had an application where we learned to click with the mouse. That's what I need. Okay, so do press W and then bridge edge loops when you've selected like this. And now you've saved a few triangles, a few vertices. And that's optimization done. <laughs> you can do other things, of course. You don't need to have uh, these detailed nipples. You can uh, do the same thing here. You can do the same thing on this side. But I'm gonna just, for the sake of tutorial and making it brief, I'm gonna leave it at this. Uh, now let's give this guy some cool shoulder pads. We're gonna go back into object mode. As I say, this will be perfectly weight painted. If we, for instance, go into uh, post mode on the, let's see here, on this armature, go into post mode, uh, we select this bone right here, some spine bone, I don't know what that's called. And then we go into, uh, let's see here, the chainmail, and we go into weight paint mode, and we'll see exactly that it's, it has retained all the weight paint, and that's just exactly what we want, of course. And of course, I completely forgot about the shape keys. I have to edit this in somewhere. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put this in. So I promised you I'm gonna show you how to make, like, if you have a character select screen and you want, might want to, like, have different ear sizes and, uh, I don't know, different cheeks and different noses and, you know, the characters like this. Stuff like that. You can also create races with this. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to create, for instance, here, uh, I've selected the head mesh here, uh, and I'm gonna add a shape key here. And these shape keys can be accessed later on in Unity also. This is just the basis. I'm gonna add one more, I'm just gonna name this... Uh, of course you can name this like cheek and ear or whatever, you're gonna have a lot of different styles for this, but I'm just gonna rename this to... 
can't I rename this? Hello. Ah, okay, double click. Uh, we can really name this the elf. <laughs> Just to create an elf. Uh, and now when we're in this shape key, every edit that we make is not gonna happen to the base. Um, the base key. Oh, I don't have the this turn on also. Uh, let's start the display so let's see what I'm doing here. Uh, and then we're gonna go and do proportion editing and we're gonna drag this up. We're gonna slide these down a little bit and move this up. Oops. <laughs> move this up a little bit like this. Looks a little bit like elf ears. It's just me. <laughs> it runs like these are the worst elf ears I ever saw. <laughs> Look like Spock or something. I don't know. Uh, sure. Uh, we also gotta add a shape key. Let's uh, let's add something here. Let's make the the, the beautiful wow, <laughs> beautiful cheekbones here. <laughs> Does this look like an elf? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Looks like an elf. <laughs> That's the only comment. <laughs> One comment looks like an elf. <laughs> okay, so now 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 the elf. Here. Okay, let's go back into object mode. Uh, now we have zero elfness, but if we increase this value, as you can see, wink goes up. And of course, you can have like middle values, like you can have a half elf, and you can have complete elf here, for instance, if you have one uses for races. You can also use it, of course, for nose and stuff like that. You can attach this, and it's easier for you to understand now how to create character slides. It's very, very easy to make this in this kind of way with blend shapes. Uh, but yeah, let's continue with back into object mode. Uh, so. Uh, we yeah we want to create some cool shoulder pads for this guy so let's create a uh, let's create a sphere here for instance here you can uh, adjust how many sides and everything is going to be on the square uh, you can probably get away with fewer than thirty two segments you don't need to have these details even for the shoulder pads I don't think but uh, just for the sake of things uh, we're going to keep it like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into modifiers I'm going to add a mirror modifier and we're gonna go into edit mode and here's what's gonna happen here uh so now it's gonna work perfectly because we have uh if i move the circle around like this we can now work if you have a mirror modifier we can work with things working on uh, both sides at the same time it mirrors it on the other side now it mirrors it on the x-axis uh, but often you've messed things up like for instance often uh, you will have, let, let's say I move my cursor, I just right click, move my cursor here. Uh, I'm gonna go into object mode. It's gonna delete this, just to show you. And let's say I create a, uh, create a UV sphere here. And now I add a more modifier, because this just bothered me so much. And I create a mirror modifier, and I go into edit mode, and I move around. And now it's not centered in the middle. So how do we get this to be centered in the middle? Uh, if you have something like this... And you're like, oh, wow, I just really want this to be perfectly mirrored. Okay, so here's what I figured out. Uh, go, into, go into increment. This is how I do This is probably the fast way to do this. Uh, I just take any vertices, copy it with Control D. Then I have this thing, uh, which locks it into the grid. And then I move this into the origin point. I, there, there might be, again, there might be a very much faster way to do this. You can, this doesn't have to be centered in the origin point. You can, for instance, if you want to have it here, you can select wherever you want to have it. But this, I think it's very good. Uh, when you use this, by the way, it will snap to something. You can snap to a lot of things. We're going to use snap to uh, to other things later on in the tour. Here we are snapping to the grid. Uh, here we can have it there, but we might want the mirror to mirror around the leg, for instance. If we want to create something around the leg, we can move the point here, for instance, wherever we want. But now we just want it in the origin point. Uh, and I'm gonna go Shift S, uh, which, and then we're gonna select cursor to select it. That moves the 3D cursor to this point. And then if we go into object mode and we select this sphere again, and then we press, this is the weirdest shortcut. Am I recording even? Yes, I'm recording, perfect. Uh, the weirdest shortcut in this, in Blender is Shift, Control, Alt, and C. Yes. <laughs> you need your entire hand, it's like this. Eh. And then you use origin to 3D cursor. And this is gonna move the origin point. But the origin point of the object is what defines how the mirroring is working. So this took a while for me to figure it out, but now you know. If you've ever struggled with this, now you know. Okay, so now we're in the spear. 
Spear. You can press one, just select one work C and control L to select everything. Uh, or you can just double A. Since the double A selects every vertices. L, if you press one vertex and control L, it's everything that's linked to that object. That's like things you use all the time in Blender. So if you're new to Blender, I think that's something very good to remember. And now you see it's moving like this. That's because we have the increment on here. Uh, so now we're going to move up to the shoulders. Move them in something like this. Looking terribly schmexy. Uh, press S to scale. Something like this. Uh, press Z to go into uh, wireframe mode. Press 1 to go from the side. Zoom in. Um, let's see. A to deselect. B box select. Now box select is pretty useful actually. Uh, select these vertices. X delete vertices. B again. Select here, X vertices, Z to go out of the uh, wireframe mode, select these. Now we have something that looks a little bit, I mean, we can tweak this, of course, a lot to look, make, it look, make it look better. But something like this is a shoulder pad, right? Uh, and now we can move, now we can take the entire thing around this, again, using control to select here. Uh, we can select, we have individual audience already. Uh, this is very, usually the two mode, modes that I use on this, I almost always never use this. It's always like medium pointer with individual audience. There are uses for these, uh, but usually it's medium pointer individual audience. Individual audience means that everything moves just de depending on its own point. <laughs> is what I, like if you want to extrude in the direction of the normal, that's how I think about it. Like in the direction of the normal, individual point, uh, medium point from the median of all the points. That's how I understand it. So, uh, we're gonna do uh, individual origins, we're gonna scale, we're gonna press E uh, to extrude, we're gonna scale in this way, and in this way, and in this way. Oh, look, does it look cool? Looks super cool. Um, and then, there's different ways of creating armor, so okay. So, when you create an armor, um, or we create clothing overall. Like, I don't have to, as for instance, I have here, I have these things here. You don't have to make it this way. You could have clothing um, which doesn't touch the skin exactly. What you could do with the clothing also is that you could, um, you could have a uh, shader which is double sided, so it takes everything inside also. But of course, a double sided shader is a little bit more computational expensive. So I like personally. To create, um, to create an inside of objects, so that I don't have to use a double-sided uh, shader. But you can do that, of course. Uh, to s that way, you save uh, like texture space because you don't have to have texture for the inside. But at the same time, it's gonna look. I think it looks a little bit better if you actually create those vertices. And it's of course it weighs a few vert. It's a trade-off. It's up to you how you want to do things. But this is how I do it. Okay. Uh, so here we have this uh, cool shoulder pad, and we can extrude again, and we can make it a little bit, a little bit, like, uh, like this, like this, question mark? Want to have it, yeah, let's select this part, oops, select this part and move it in and scale it a li little bit, a little bit. <laughs> like this. I don't know. Ah, it doesn't look perfect, but it, it looks fine. It looks fine. It's fine, guys. Oh wow, this this fine this part here though does not look fine. Uh, so let's remove this edge x edge. Uh. Wow, how did it how did it become like this? <laughs> that's not it's not at all what I wanted. Okay, select this, select this. Uh, why is it why is it so ugly? <laughs> you ask. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, control D to create another vertex there. Just yeah, something like this. This looks this looks decent. Uh, now what I'm gonna do? Okay, it doesn't. Really look perfect here, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's select this edge here. Let's remove this. Uh, oh, it's not because of the edge. It's because this 
Come here, okay. Remove this vertex. Uh, and then, let's see here. Control D to dupli duplicate that vertex. And let's see here. I'm just gonna fill this in. You can see down here when I click, it goes and click quite fast. Uh, okay, so this is looking not so good. Uh, I'm just manually going through her. Whoops. This part is something I just want to delete. <laughs> it just didn't end up at all. At all as I wanted to. Okay, move in these vertic vertices. Sure, it looks fine. Uh, you, you, can, uh, you can mess around with this. You can make it move, look. I'm sure you can make it look a million times more beautiful. Uh, but there's a couple of things here. First of all, uh, at least the dome here looks a little bit uh, low poly, even though it's very high poly. So we're gonna select everything here. Whoops. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Uh, nope. Select you guys and you guys. And you select you and select you. And. Uh, and I'm gonna smooth them. I'm gonna do UVs and smooth. So you can have two different shading. You can have a flat shading, as you can see here, and this is smooth shading. It makes anything look. Like it's a sphere, essentially. Everything that's a sphere or that's smooth, like clothing, should have smooth, essentially. Instead, it's gonna look good. Uh, okay, so that looks decently fine. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna create a spike here. Uh, this is very similar to uh, the character of the shoulder pads that I created my character in uh, in my game, actually. Uh, so what I did is I went here. There's a million types of do or a million ways of doing this also. Uh, I went to tools and I went to subdivide and subdivide just. If, if you have four uh, surface here, it's gonna double that. Uh, this becomes four, this becomes four, this becomes four, this becomes four. You understand what I mean? <laughs> what I'm saying. Okay, subdivide again. And we're gonna click the middle surface here. We're gonna go change the transformation orientation to normal. Normal means that the, the axis, the axis, <laughs> the axis are relative to the normal, not relative to the global uh, grid that we got down here. Okay, so now we're in normal. Now we're gonna go into proportionality. I always select connect, or almost always select connected. You have two uh, ways of doing proportionality. You can do connected, which is only things that are connected. Uh, the things that get selected when you press Ctrl L, right? And then you have en enabled with just anything that belongs to the same object. Okay. So now we can select the blue arrow, uh, and we can scroll to make this sphere a little bit smaller. And we can make it like this, and maybe... Uh, it's weird that it didn't go normal. Why didn't it go in this direction, though? It goes up. Uh, is it because I have individual origins? Yeah, it's because I have individual origins. So do medium point and normal, and then just drag this up. It, it doesn't look perfect. <laughs> Again, it doesn't look perfect, but it looks fine. It's a it's a spike, guys. <laughs> it's a spike. Um, and yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, so that that's how we can create a spike, for instance. Uh, now we're gonna create the inside of this shoulder pad. So I'm just gonna go like this. Uh, or how do I do this? E yeah, sure, let's do it like this. And we can duplicate this. And we can scale it down. Have something like this. Uh, yeah, this looks fine, I guess. And then we we'll select the rim again. Or the thing around this object. Again, this is not gonna look perfect. Uh, I'm not gonna spend the time on it looking perfect. Uh, w and bridge edge loops to join them. And then we can, for instance, that is gonna look, gonna look so so. Uh, Z again to go into wireframe mode. Uh, and let's see here. Select some of the inner vertices here, like this. Uh, w bridge edge loops. And schmink, schmink, whoops. Hey. Schmink, schmink, schmink. 
that's another useful thing. You can just press A once and you will just deselect everything you have selected. That's so also very useful. F, triple. Okay, and now we have the shoulder pads and we have some inner part of it. Of course, it doesn't look perfect. I'm <laughs> I messed up the, the design a little bit. Uh, we can also go and maybe... Uh, let's see. Let's go back to global. Let's go back to... Yeah, medium points, fine. And let's... Let's give a little bit of a... I don't know. A little bit of a shape to this. Uh, shape this in a little bit and maybe up a little bit like this. Control L, select everything. Drag in. Maybe... Slightly tilt them like this. Yeah, this looks looks fine. Looks like a fine shoulder pad, right? Maybe scale them up a little bit. Ah, like this. Now it's looking manly. <laughs> They're looking cool. A cool guy. Uh, okay, so now we have these things. Now, uh, what I would do. Okay, so this. What I would do with this probably is I would. Do a little bit of sculpting on this, but first we need a zip code. How how long is this video now? Then, thirty minutes. Probably gonna be an hour. <laughs> mm. And hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying learning this at least. So, uh, I was about to say yes. We're gonna we're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna create a high a high poly version of this. So what I usually the workflow that I use is that I create a low poly version of everything and a high poly version of everything and then I use the bake mesh maps to create the normal map from the high poly version in low poly version. I'm gonna see when that when we get into Substance Painter. So, uh, here we have the sphere and we're gonna just uh, control D it and we're gonna name this uh, know, shoulder pads and at the end, that's quite important actually, I'm gonna do underscore low uh, why do I name it underscore low? Well, this is the default naming in Substance Painter for uh, for low poly things, and underscore high is the default for if you have the exact same na name. So if I have shoulder pads underscore high, uh, then it will use the high version uh, for uh, for it when we get into. We're also gonna join it, gonna separate this, and uh, and do a couple of different things. Anyways, we get into sculpt mode. But before we go into sculpt mode, there's going to be a link down in the description to uh, the sculpting brushes. There's a lot of good sculpting brushes. Uh, like, you have some sculpting brushes in Blender, but most of them are not super good, in my opinion. I I'm not I'm not a super fan of them. Also, we're gonna add a uh, solidify modifier to this high poly mesh. And remember, the high poly mesh, it doesn't matter. Like, the we're not gonna use the high poly mesh for anything except baking the mesh map. So it doesn't matter if it's a silly amount of vertices, because those vertices are not gonna be on the actual model later on. We're gonna see how that works also. So let's say we add a solidify mode divide with zero, zero 005. Oh wow, I <laughs> changed the camera angle there. Okay, zero, zero 005, we apply this. Uh, and then we're gonna go and file and append. And we're gonna append that thing that I mentioned, the link in the description, to the free brushes uh, that you can use. There's a lot of good brushes. Uh, for some reason, the guide... Uh, let's see here. Uh, the guide that I followed said that you should put it in this very long thing, like App Data, Roaming, Blender, Foundation, Blender. I don't think you need to put it there. Like, I think you can put the ore brushes that blend in any easy to get place on your hard drive and it will, this will just be so much easier. You go into brushes anyways uh, and you select all these that has orb in them. And these were actually created I think by uh, one of the Warcraft uh, developers or something. Like this, there was someone really talented that created these brushes. These brushes are amazing. Uh, so it's just amazing that they're free also. So now we're appended them. And we're gonna go into this high poly mesh. I'm gonna go into sculpt mode. And we're gonna go into Dyn Topo. Dyn Topo is basically... So now we have all these vertices. We've seen all these vertices, we've seen how many vertices there are. But if you press Dyn Topo, it's gonna split the vertices into many, uh, many more vertices. Uh, <laughs> you can just see how this works. Uh, so let's see. We're gonna go subdivide, edges, and relative detail. We're gonna go uh, down to three is what I like to do. 
and I actually actually when, it's a little bit unfortunate because when I press three, it changes the camera angle in OBS also. So that's just a little bit annoying. But anyways, um, and then we're gonna select one of the new brushes that we got here. We're gonna go into this little flat brush, and this I think is perfect uh, to do things like this to uh, strength is a little bit high uh, to make to make edges like this a little bit cooler. Wow, what happened there? Sometimes these brushes are a little bit unpredictable, I will say. A little bit unpredictable. I mean, that's true for all the brushes here. Uh, probably I should learn ZBrush or something. <laughs> You'll see, it's not... Uh, and the things that's sticking through here is the other mesh. You can uh, hide that if you want to while you're doing this. Uh, we're just gonna go and uh, do some... Uh, you can do all these things also in uh, Substance Painter if you want to. You don't have to do it in this. And also I should probably have uh, subsurfaced and made this a little bit more high poly before I started sculpting, but that is fine. It's fine. Again, it's just just tutorial. I know I know that you can make this more beautiful than I'm making it right now. Uh, I, I'm... Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, I think we're gonna disable the head while we're doing this. Makes it much easier to see what we're doing. Okay. Just get a little bit here, just get a little bit there. Wow. As I said, sometimes it's so unpredictable what it does. Like sometimes it doesn't make these beautiful edges. See, this looks little, this looks fine. It looks a little bit worn here on the edges. I kinda like it. Wow. <laughs> Again. Maybe turn down the strength a little bit. Something like this looks better. As you can see, there's gonna be a shit ton of vertices with this, but it doesn't matter. Because we're just gonna bake this into a mesh map, so it doesn't matter there's a million vertices in this. It's not gonna affect the character in game, anyways. Uh yeah, sure. I I'm not gonna do the entire thing, I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> this I messed up a little bit. Of course. Be more careful when you do this yourself, else your character. We look a little bit shit, and uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's amazing. Uh, I mean, you can make, you can do a lot with this. You can do like cracks and stuff. I don't think that cracks maybe this is probably some a metal piece or something. And here's another good thing that I like doing. If you, for instance, want to work on some area uh, with there's, a, there's two different brushes, right? There's brushes... I don't know exactly what they're called, but there's like types of brushes which are more like stamps. And if you want to be able to stamp something, I think it's easier to go out of uh, dynamical topology. So instead what I like to do is paint that area, like paint it with something with a l very low strength, so that it adds polygons to that area, so that I can then turn off Dine Topo on that area. Uh, it's a little bit... it sounds weird, but you, you can understand. You can also press control to smooth things out. Or shift, I think. Oh, that's not... It? Does it shift the brush? Oh, it goes into the smooth brush. That's what it does. I didn't even notice that that's what it did before. Okay. That's pretty cool. So you can smooth that, these out. It doesn't look so horrible there. Eh? Smooth out here. Smooth out here. Oh, this looks amazing. Yeah, let's smooth these out. Smooth them out, I sure. I... Why did it? Let's let's regret some some of these. I don't know what. Okay. I don't know exactly why. Okay, I need to paint with this first, and then I need to smooth. That's why. So paint, paint, paint. See, there's almost no change. That's because they're very low strength on this. This is just to add more polygons. As you can see here, this bird, this tree is got four hundred thousand. It's insane. Of course, this is not something <laughs> on one shoulder pad. It's not something you would want on your character. And this might make your computer lag a little bit, but... And now I can smooth them out. Smooth out. Smooth, smooth, smooth. I didn't even notice that it, goes, that it went to a separate brush when I did this before. I thought it was the same the same brush, but just a smoothing function when you have L down shift, but apparently not. Okay. Uh, this looks a little bit better. Okay, I mean, 
is it? <laughs> I was like, is this really how we created your characters? They look a little bit better than this, hopefully. <laughs> or they're like, oh, this looks better than <laughs> what <this> we've seen. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, I mean, that, that looks fine. Now we can add some. These I think are really cool. Uh, so these are the things that I talked about earlier. These are like different dents and stuff. So for instance, we can go into this thing. And let's go out of the Dean Topo because it usually just slows everything down so much. Okay. Oh, did I double click on it? Dang this. Come on. Okay, no, no, not double click again. Uh, then you hold down. Con uh, you can just drag with this. Oh, this is because we have the mirror modifier. Uh, disable the mirror modifier. If you have any modifiers, just take them away while you're doing sculpting. Because it's just going to slow your computer down to an absolute crawl otherwise. Uh, and turn off the Topo when you're doing this. Uh, so here, if you drag like this, you will see that it creates a crack. Like this. And depending on how... This looks pretty good. So you can add different... You can see. Of course, you need to be more careful and you need to, you know... Um, <laughs> add some... I'm just gonna add some... Of course, be more artistic with this. Only add in special places, make it work, you know, do all, all that thing. <laughs> Don't do it like I do it. Uh, but it's just to show you. Uh, and this thing adds, either you can add a stone like this, but you can also add a dent like this. For instance, if we're at a corner like this, and we want to add a little bit of a dent here, add like, ink. if you hold down control, you can do the inverse, the inverse of this brush. Maybe there's a little bit of dent there. I'm not going to go through the entire thing. But now we get the idea. Now we get the idea what this is about. So, now we can add back the mirror modifier. And we can apply the mirror modifier. And we can go into... We can hide this for the time being. Uh, we can go into the shoulder pads low here. And we can apply this mirror modifier. And we can go into edit mode. And we can, let's see, press here. I just like that this disabled while doing this. Control L, select this. P to separate, separate selection. Go back into object mode. Uh, then we're gonna select this left shoulder pad right here. Select this bone here, which is the uh, the, the thing one. <laughs> uh, A to deselect, by the way. Uh, so now uh, this there, this bone selected there. And now we press Control P, and we're gonna set uh, parent to object. We don't want to. Uh, we want to keep the transform, but we don't want to. Uh, we want to select it to the bone, by the way. <laughs> I'm just talking bullshit. It was just what connected the bone. Now you see it jumped into the armature. We want to do the same thing with this. Uh, A to deselect. Uh, select this bone. Control P. Uh, set the parent to the bone. And this means that when this bone moves, it will move. Uh, this will be when you we move this later on into Unity. This will be a mesh render, not a skin mesh render. Because we're not select we're not connected it to the armature. You can also connect to the armature. Uh, but that's more like if you create other clothing and if you want to do weight painting and stuff like that. But now we've connected it to this bone, we've connected this to this bone. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing for the high versions here. Uh, so now we have this high on the left side. Oh, we haven't even uh, split them yet. So go into edit mode. Now we're going to see a million gazillion things here. Uh, wow, this is so slow. Okay, B, select everything. P, separate. Selection. <sighs> okay. Object mode. C to go back. Uh, select this high mesh. Select this bone. Control P. Set the parent to bone. This thing. This bone. A deselect. <laughs> this bone. Shift click. Control P. Set the parent to bone. And now we have. Let's see here. This is uh, shoulder pad right high. And this here is shoulder pads. Uh, Shoulder pads left. Hi. Perfect. Uh, yes, it seemed like I named them correctly. And let's see here. Now we can hide this. And we have shoulder pads low. This is the right side. Shoulder pads. Wait. I, how did I name them? Did I name them depending on the orientation to me or to the character? Okay. So right is this. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no. The same as this. Uh, so this is left shoulder, I know, but it's, it's right for me. <laughs> this is probably not how I should have named it. God damn me. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, and sure, Le left. And as I said, these are always going to. Uh, now we can see the head again. Where is the head? Perfect. Uh, now, now we have this connected to these bones. We have this connected. Uh, this with weight paint and everything. Uh, this even means that we can disable the chest. Uh, we're gonna do this in uh, in Unity. We can do it here also. And let's just let's see how much time we have left. Wow, forty-seven minutes. I was gonna show you how to do a sword. Maybe I save that to a separate tutorial because it's gonna be an hour or something like that. Okay. Uh, it's it's basically it's the same thing. Like uh, you just add it to you take you you create the same way you create a shoulder pad. You can create a sword. Just do the same. Just from basic shapes. Just create a, sh uh, a sword. You can add it to this bone right here, the hand bone, and that will work perfectly in Unity. But now uh, I think it's time to move into Substance Painter. So now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select. Uh, first we're gonna select. We're gonna export everything first. So let's go export. Uh, FBX and I'm gonna go into D this is just my wherever you're on your computer of course blender files and let's just name this uh, tutorial character and here we have everything selected and we just export okay <laughs> it's the third time recording this I made a couple of errors first of all let's move this back I made a couple of errors before we go into substance painter this armor that I created there, remove, just click minus, minus on the material, because that's gonna mess up in Substance Painter otherwise. Uh, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna select the chainmail, we're gonna select uh, both our shoulder pads, so we're gonna press spacebar and smart UV project. We're gonna UV project, and I'm gonna show you how this looks. Uh, drag this out, create it separately, you can drag this back at any point, this is just temporarily to show you how to do this. Uh, and then you select the UV image editor, so you can see what we're doing here. Now we've already projected everything, so go into edit mode, and here we can see uh, how this looks. So there's... okay, what is... what are we doing? What is UV projection? Okay. So we have a texture, this symbolizes the texture, right? And these islands, uh, these dots here, symbolizes the vertices, and these are of course the triangles, and of course this part of the texture that you can see right here will be whatever, this part on the mesh, for instance. And there's two problems that you run into with UV unwrapping, why it's so difficult. First of all is you have visible seams, which means that the, when these islands are not, when they're not connected, there might be a visible seam between the textures. And this is not really that much of a problem in Substance Paint. Like, you can almost have, like, everything on separate islands. It's, like, almost gonna work. Like, you almost don't need to care about it when you're doing this in Substance Paint. That's why I love it. Uh, also, another thing that you run into is that you want to have, you want to pack as much as possible into as small a space as possible, because when you do things, when you do game development, you want to have a, as few textures as possible, because every texture that will create a new draw call, because you have a new material, every material will create a new draw call, so you want to pack everything into like a mega texture with everything in, like every sword, every armor or something into one texture that have very few textures that you need to read into memory uh because of how the, the memory works it does it can keep everything in the cache on the video card usually it's like two gigabytes or something uh, or not cache uh, the ram on the and you don't want to have to re read from disk again into the video cards ever anyway separate topic <laughs> but that's why you want to have maybe separate or packed it as tight as possible. This is usually not a problem with characters I haven't found, but when I do an environment, it's very important to be able to pack things tightly because you have so many objects when you're doing environments. And you really need to pack it tight to get uh, everything to work smoothly and to not get any performance issues later on. So, to save you that hassle, what I've done here is I've created seams. Uh, this is probably not where I would create a seam normally, but it's just, just to sh show you how to do it. So you can just select, for instance, let's say I want a seam here. A completely illogical seam, <laughs> I know to put it there, but... I'm just gonna mark a seam. As you see, the red thing here, I marked a seam here earlier, uh, when I messed up earlier. Um, so this, when we, if we UV unwrap again, it will not... Like, these two will be on separate islands. This thing here and this thing here will be on separate islands. We can see this, uh, even if we select everything here. Because I have a seam around this entire globe here, 
these things here are on separate islands. Uh, otherwise, it would have unwrapped it on the same island. Uh, but as I said, that might make it more difficult for it to pack into a more compact, um, more compact space. So, that's enough of a rant on that. That's UV unwrapping. There's, it's an entire science. We, I can talk about it for hours. Uh, but uh, now let's go and export. So we've already exported the main character. We've exported that thing. But now we, what I want to do is I want to separately export the armor. And this is so that we can... Uh, uh, first of all, <laughs> though... You, okay, so I did it a little bit in the wrong order. First of all, you should UV unwrap. Then you should export the entire character, everything. Just export everything, not just selected objects, every, export everything. And that's the file you're gonna use in Unity. Then you want to go in again, and you want to export the armor, because that is the part you want to get into Substance Painter. So we're gonna select here, as we selected the armor, we selected the chainmail, and we're gonna export this as an FBX. Uh, and here I named it Tutorial Character Armor. I've already, as I said, I've already done this once, so that's why it's there. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same for the high poly. It's just this, these two in this case. I'm gonna go File, I'm gonna go Export, FX, make sure, again, Selected Objects and Mesh only, with, with both these things. And Tutorial Character Armor High, we're gonna export it there. And now we can finally jump <laughs> into Substance Painter, it's a long tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Substance Painter. So the only thing I've done there, I went File, New, and unfortunately you can't see the pop-ups. I don't know why, it doesn't register in OBS, so... File, new, and then I select 4K texture, and then I selected um, the, 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 low, the low poly version. So this is the low poly version that we got of our, our armor here. Uh, it looks fine. It looks, uh, looks absolutely fine. Uh, so here what we're going to do first, we're going to go into texture settings. And we're going to go into bake mesh maps. Uh, and I'm going to select the high poly mesh. You can't see the pop-up here, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to select the high poly mesh. It's under... Oh, we can't even see the baking. Okay. So, there, there, God damn it. there's going to be high-definition meshes, and there's going to be a, a document, which you can click on there. Hopefully, I will uh, print screen this. I, I'll print screen this, and I'll uh, edit it in later. Um, and I'm going to go frontal distance, 0 0.2. I'm sorry you can't see this. Hopefully, I will have edited this in. And then you're going to go match, and you're going to go by mesh name, and you're going to go bake default mesh maps that is gonna take one second and uh, if everything goes right if i named everything correctly okay now we can see the uh the things that we make here there's some issues as you can see it's bleeding through <laughs> it's bleeding through here some some small some small errors uh but for the most part it looks pretty good honestly um we have these, these small nudges and everything. So here what we can do. Uh, we can go into layers. And I'm just going to create a very, very simple thing here. Uh, I think there's already a chainmail. Uh, let's just drag an iron chainmail here. Uh, and wow, that's uh, absolutely ridiculously huge. Uh, we're going to add a... Let's see here. Can you see this when I click on this? I have to check. I have to move this. I can see if you can see it. No, we can't see it. Okay, we're gonna add a black mask on this. And then we're gonna go into uh, this little thing here. We can select uh, certain things. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna create a paint layer on this black mask. And I'm gonna select, uh, let's see, this is object. So we're gonna select this object right here. Now it will only be applied on this object, this uh, chainmail. And we can go into the chainmail. We can change some... Uh, properties on this chainmail uh, let's see here go back here and let's see here oh it's it has a lot of parameters uh, we're gonna first of all make the scale a little bit smaller something like this maybe this looks pretty decent uh, and then we might want to have some um, some leather or something some leather in the edges here uh, as you can see the, these pop out a little bit so these are gonna be perfect for adding leather I think so let's add a leather, uh, leather bag, sure, that's probably gonna look decent. We, again, we add a black mask to this, and then we go into this, uh, let's see here, <laughs> add the paint layer first on this black thing right here, and then we go into this thing, uh, and we need to zoom in, and let's see, how do you move in this? Is it alt? Yeah, it's alt. 
You know, all on the alt button in uh, Substance Painter to move around. And then we're going to select this square here, uh, which selects only, uh, only one surface. So we can select this. And as you can see, the problem here, we are painting the leather here, but as you can see, we also have the chains there. So we're going to remove the chains also, because that's going to look a little bit terrible. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, I didn't go through this, but you can mark these with different colors. You can uh, vertex paint them and then you can select by color and this will make this step a lot faster. But on the other hand, you need, it's pretty much up to when you want to do that job. Like, do you want to do that job? Wink, wink, wink. Yeah, I need to have the sound effects for everything. Uh, now we go back to the iron chain layer. We go into the paint layer. Uh, we can paint with zero. And we can select the same things. The same things that we selected there. Now we can see that the leather looks good. Because now we're not applying both these things to it. Uh, so basically, these layers work much like Photoshop. And the reason, if you think like, why is. Why, how can we even paint two things on top of each other? That's The reason for this is that. Um, the chain mail has a height to it, and that height uh, is not completely overridden by the leather, and that's why it's bleeding through here. Okay, so this looks... Of course we're gonna do the, the other side of it and everything, but... <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna do one side, because it, it takes too long. <laughs> it takes too long. But you get the idea, you do this for the other side, maybe do it down here or something. Uh, and if you don't have... Like, for instance, I can do it... Uh, let's say I do it down here. Uh, I do this part right here. And let's say I do this. And this paint right here. You can just drag. One. And let's say, for instance, like, like here, it doesn't look super good, right? There's, there's like no height on this. So what you can do on this leather bag is you can add a little bit of height. Uh, let's see here. Attributes. Uh, no. Why can't you do that? Technical parameters. Height position. Let's see here. Okay, so let's add a little bit of height there. Okay, now we have a little bit of height on this. Now it looks better. Uh, of course you need to do it the entire way back here and everything. You need to be more careful. But now it looks pretty good, honestly. Now there's some leather on the sides there. Uh, <laughs> one more am I gonna go through? Yeah, we can, we can add some dirt. Just to make it look... Uh, let's see here. Dirt. I think it's a smart material. The smart materials are amazing. I love them. <laughs> make everything so, so much faster. Uh, let's see here. Dirt is a dirt material. Perfect. So we can add the dirt. Oh, now it's a little bit dirty. We don't need it to be this dirty, though. Uh, let's see here what the parameters are on this thing. Open it up. Uh, and also, I think the color is a little bit... A little bit not perfect, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Finish grainy. Okay. Oh, here are the colors. Let's make this a little bit darker and let's make this a little bit... Oh, like this. Oh, no, it looks perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, and let, let's remove a little bit of this. We'll hide it for the time being. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to the dirt later on. Uh, let's add something for the shoulder pads here. So let's go uh, something like a metal. It could be cool on this. Steel. Steel could be cool. Steel. Let's uh, add some ruined steel. Smack. Think a few seconds. This book, of course, be doing a 4K texture. That's why it's a little bit slow. It's my iPhone going off there. Uh, and then, what are we going to do here? We're going to go and add a black mask to this. And then we're going to select object. Like this. Select this. And... Let's see here. Let's see how this looks. This looks fine. 
Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> there's some work that needs to be done on the edges and everything, but for the most part, it's fine. Let's add some color to this also. Let's add, uh, let's see, painted steel. This is pretty good. Uh, let's do the painted steel. I'll take a few seconds for this. Mm. Luckily, I got the Dr. Pepper. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Of course, uh, you know, <laughs> when you do this yourself, you're gonna spend more time. I'm just trying to make this a brief tutorial, but it's gonna be like one and a half hours. <laughs> My brief tutorial, one and a half hours. <laughs> make a game character in only one and a half hours. Amazing, right? Um. Okay, so we had a black mask of this, and then we go. And this we can actually paint on, I think. We could select these things here. We could go... Uh, maybe I'll do that first, though. Maybe I'll do like this, and like this. Uh, I don't think I want to add to, to that, that thing there. That thing. Uh, we can also do this symmetrical thing. Now I think it's gonna paint on the other side. Yes, that's amazing. Absolutely. No, it's painting on. <laughs> it's painting down there. Why is it doing that? Oh, it's painting through. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, anyways, uh, I was actually gonna go and do a paint layer on this to show you how the paint works. Uh, so here we can add some paint and we can go into. We can create a good brush here. Let's go and take a. Uh, like some splatter or some uh, paint. That's here. Paint. Uh, some paint comes with a lot of good brushes, honestly. Uh, let's go with. Uh, sure, this one. See how this looks. That looks fine. And let's add a little bit of size to this. And let's add. Let's see. Some jitter here. Some flow. I mean, we don't need flow jitter. We need an angle jitter. Uh, position jitter, probably not needed. And then, just go into this. And we paint a little bit like, like this. And we paint it like this. And you get the idea, now it looks a little bit like this part of the, this part of the thing was, um, was painted at some point. And then, maybe that, that paint got worn or worn off or something. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit slow since I'm working with a 4k texture. I should probably have done 2k just for this tutorial. Just to make it a little bit faster. And also I have Blender on in the background. And I'm recording. <laughs> I'm doing like a million things at the same time. Okay. Uh, we can do a zero paint also. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? There it is. Yeah. No, here it is. We move a little bit here. I mean, you can you can make this much more beautiful yourself. Just just to show how this would look. Yeah, something like this. And now we have uh, a little bit of paint on both of these. Uh, and the color looks uh, so so. Can we change the color? Uh, paint. Okay, let's. Shiny paint, there is the color. Let's add dark red or something. Or maybe red is not the best because if you want to add some blood or something. Yeah, blue, cool. No, this looks. <laughs> it look it doesn't look amazing! So everyone, it looks fine. <laughs> looks fine, everyone. Um You can you can uh, it's not gonna be a complete substance painter tutorial. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you a little bit about the workflow. Uh, and then what we can do... Uh, should we do some blood also? Yeah, let's, let's do just the blood. That's the last thing we have there. Let's just add a fill layer. Add a fill. And we're gonna add it on the top. On the top. No. Okay. And delete it. Uh, okay, so we... Minimize that. And we add a fill. Why is that there? That is, God damn you. <laughs> God damn you. Can I please add, add to the... Is it... 
I want to have this out of here, but I can't. Why is it... Okay, let's go down to this. And... <laughs> oh! I think it's working. No? Uh... No, that's not the one. Add fill layer. There it is. Fill layer. That's what I was looking for. Best tutorial ever. Best prepared. Okay. Add a black mask. And black mask, by the way. There's white mask and black mask. Of course, black mask is there's, it's not on anything by default. White mask is on everything by default. So usually you add a black mask. Sometimes you add a white mask. Usually black. I'm going to add a dark red color here. Uh, let's see here. We are going to paint a little bit with this. Uh, so we're going to add a paint to this. And now we want something like a splatter drop thing uh, kind of brush. Uh, so let's see here. Splatter. Yeah, this is perfect. And... Now we can do a little bit bigger size. Now we can add some, I don't know, some, some drops of blood here, for instance. We add like this. And we can go in and add a little bit of height to this. Say, ah, that's a little bit big. Maybe something like this. Uh, roughness, I think it's about right. Metallicness, some slight metallicness. Okay, so now there's some blood there. I mean, you get the idea. <laughs> Get, maybe have some dirt also on top of this. Shrink. Ah, uh, the dirt is there's a little bit too much dirt. I just have to. Uh, let's see. Add a black mask to this. And sure, we're gonna do a splatter. And let's see here. Let's do zero. Uh, or oh, wait. Actually, now I want to add. Let's remove this mask. Clear mask. Uh, remove mask. And let's add a white mask this time. And now we're gonna just paint away a little bit. Where I don't want it to be this dirty. Maybe a little bit here, maybe a little bit here. Way too much on the back here. So, that is pretty much... <laughs> it's gonna be awkward if I didn't cut it out. <laughs> I was gonna point that out in the comments. Anyways, that didn't work. Uh, I thought it would work, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. So, here we have the model. Uh, and I think it looks fine. I mean, of course you can tweak this and make it look a million times better. <laughs> but it's just an introduction on how to do things. So, now we're gonna go export textures. You can't see this uh, box, unfortunately, but what I'm gonna select here, there's a place where it says config uh, here, and you're gonna go and scroll all the way down to Unity 5, standard metallic, and then you're just gonna export. So now we're in Unity, and all I've gone ahead and did, I just started a new project, it's just called Tutorial, we have our main, ca main camera, we have our directional light here, and here we have our character. So first of all, we're gonna go and select the animation type to be humanoid uh, because else animations won't work. I don't think I'm gonna use animations. If you want to see how to make this work with animations and check the uh, make uh, make human tutorial that I did uh, and I'm gonna show you how to make make it work there. Uh, we're gonna drag in this guy uh, unapplied settings. Uh, sure, apply. And let's see here. Let's move this guy down a little bit. And he has some... Uh, let's see here. He should have some... <laughs> some high poly things which we're gonna remove. Shoulder, shoulder pads high, shoulder pads high. This we can, we can unpack this. Prefab. Unpack. Where is it? Uh, prefab there. Oh, there, it's a new menu. Okay, unpack. And we can delete these two high things, because we're not going to use them. And let's see here. Oh, it's not dot in this. <laughs> okay, we zoom in. 
Now we're gonna create a material for this. So we're gonna go create material, and we're gonna. Uh, I've also in, uh, imported the materials from Substance Painter, so we're gonna call this material armor, for instance. And we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do the albedo here and the metallic we have here, uh, and then we have the normal map there. And now, if we apply this to our shoulder pads right, and shoulder pads left, and to our chainmail, it looks pretty decent. Uh, the, the character looks a little bit see-through here, and that's because we don't have <laughs> material for the, uh, for the body. So let's create a body material. Uh, let's call it skin. And show in explorer uh, when you exported the, the make human character there's going to be a i'm just going to move this while i'm speaking it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do it at the same time i'm gonna try to uh when you exported your make human character uh, there's going to be a texture file for your skin uh, so you just take that texture file and move it into your project <laughs> i should have prepared and done this already but i forgot about it so, uh, then we can select the head here, for instance, and, oh, we, we haven't created materials, so let's just go old light skin, perfect. Uh, I don't know exactly what these settings are going to be. Let's go to the head, give it this, to the arms, give it this, to the legs, and give it this, and to the feet, and give it this. Uh, it's a little bit glossy glossy, so let's, let's adjust that a little bit. Uh, let's see here, let's zoom out. And let's rotate this guy around so we can see him in the game view. Uh, looks a little bit weirder, and that's because I think we don't have, if you go into, let's see here, edit, you can't see the menu unfortunately. Project settings, we're gonna go into player, we're gonna do color space and change that to linear instead of gamma, uh, and then it's going to look good about a million times better, I think. Mm. The default settings on Unity are a little bit weird, but I think it's like for legacy reasons, I think it's, they want to keep it like that. Uh, now it looks a little bit better. Uh, we can add a point light, maybe. Uh, looks a little bit weird, though. Normal map to this? Oh, it's not normal map, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Why does it look like this? Okay, so you need to uh, When you import a map like this, it needs to be a texture type normal map else it will look a little bit weird uh, Okay, so the area of the character. Uh, let's move the camera around there. He doesn't have pants unfortunately, but <laughs> That's fine. Hopefully uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it now. You can just add a um, A uh, What is called? Can start animating this, can add an animator to this uh, object. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you, if you want to see how to do that, how to apply uh, an animator, how to apply animation to this guy, just watch my early tutorial on my Make Human. And yeah, I think that would be pretty much it. It's There's more things I could go through, but I think this is going to be it for this tour, because it's already like one and a half hour or something. I hope you got something out of this. I don't know. I... I try to make it as fast as possible, but yeah. Thanks so much for watching, anyways. I'll see you next time. Member shout out! Member, member shout out! Thank you everyone so much for watching. There's so many new members. Thank you everyone so much. A special thank, you, of course, to our dear member. Member, here they come! Oh! <laughs> Blue Dragon, Adam Alexis, Magic Pistol Man, Simon Lauer, Rodney Cox, Herman M, The Soft Pillow, Snick, Shamanic Spencer, Hofsty, Alex, Mike, Nathaniel, Nissan, Laser Set, The Stun, Nick, 234, Jeff Henry, leading into it, Michael W, Poke U, Matthias Pauli, Topless Investments, Chorus 11, 07, W, Lutz, 978, PE Label, Peter Gold, Sean Stevens, Gabriel Juvenal, Tandex, Wisa, Cutilated, 23, Way, Mesomach 1, Ye Old Bassist, Dingo Scrub, Crew the Barbarian, Link is Week, Growing Bird, 2002, 4K Television, Unite, Moonlight Star, Drake Edge, 2000, Dave Steer, Jurassic Fart, The Swamp King, Rage, 
Strange Not, Simple Human, Ballas Ivan Up, John Domian, Gesusaki, Own77, Sam Williamson, Ellie Curtis, Noah BH, MC Hermes, Faceix, uh, Fumiaki Kinoshita, Acres Ascending, Jacob, Wookie Floren, Dam Drone, Steve Drominski, Strange Bronta, Donkey Kong, Sky Surfer Zero, Tim Dot and Jake, Dan Leeds, Santa, John Stein, Eric Bakken, The McDunkin, Chloe, Rob Akuna, Chase Close, John Lacava, Ayayay, Honsa Kos, Dingai, Michael Cupido, Agony Reborn, Ramen Noodles for Me, Nicolas Sanotti, Nethervex, Andrew Blank, Aaron Noble, Adam Alexis, Batsuma, Brandon Dobbs, Callas is Missed, Colo Balumbo, Chloe Coop Cooper, Dan Goodsell, David Hanel, David Newman, DBK Drummer, Dingus Crop, Dr. Jaden, Drew Stiles, Eventum Tantum, Freeman Stepson, Jeff George, Infinite Draw, Javier Diaz, Kason, Magneto, Mrs. Mrs. Smith, Neo Terror, Ninja Longdom, Arango Mango, Piotr Stalorsk, Pote, um, Prince Mok, Magok, Esquire, Rainbow Cake, Search, Karamaru, Super Nooper Noodle 7, Wonder Bread, X Covenant, X Smith, Gaming, Musketeer, Mr. Thule, Tom Q, the Michael, Robert Lewis, Yoma Saho, Adam Ruth, Red Khan, But With Ass, Barbara McKenley, Name the Epithet, The Lurgarf, Stricker Mike, Toffer Scott, 7 Guys 777, Brian Wood, Postal Guru, Anthony Dibble, Mentosaurus, Katie Griggs, Rufino, A. Oregano, Big Bob MTG, Jack Rian, Patrick Hennig, Liquid E, uh, Ben Jones, uh, Jose De Jesus, Regalado, Aguayo, Mark Logalo, Cracker GF, Ian Moss, Michael Cupido, Juan Tu Ying, Vincent Baudet. You guys are amazing. If you also want to become a dark disciple and help rule the underworld, then check out the join button next to the subscribe button or check out my Patreon. Link in the description. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Also, thank you to the Bad Jonas on Patreon. Give me the lights on down there. Thank you.